is the Glass Cannon Network. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to get in the trunk. We're getting into it now. Season five, we're on episode three as things plummet forward in our Impossible Landscapes run. Uh, it is thrilling in terms of the show, but it's also, <laughs> I'm getting hot, like literally hot uh, in my room here as I even prepare for this. I'm sweating, it is summer, it's full on summer now. And <laughs> yes. I just, no I know, Troy, I know your thoughts on summer. Uh, Francis, you hate it or you love it? Do you like being sweaty? Is it oh, your favorite? God. No, I like warmth. I don't like sweatiness. I like That's an important distinction. Uh, this is uh, New York and the East Coast has some of the hottest, nastiest, stankest summers on earth. <laughs> stankest. Stank. Write it down. It's Good word. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah. But um, I've got a question for you guys uh, today. I was thinking about this the other day. I was listening to a, a radio show that posed the question. And I was, I was interested in your thoughts. Since Kate's not on this show, this is a, sh this is a, a call filled with movie watchers. I'm curious <laughs> of what would rank is as it? one of your top five, whatever, uh, summer movies. And not, I'm not talking about like summer blockbusters, like summer releases. I'm saying set in the summer that's like very, very summery. Is there a movie that stands out that you go to as, as a favorite? Uh, Troy, I'll start with you. Do you have something that, that jumps out as a favorite summer film? It's probably Wet Hot American Summer. Uh, <laughs> yes! Which is, you know, kind of a, a, a kitschy choice. But I mean, I just, I remember the first time seeing it, just peeing my pants laughing. Yeah. Because I was such a big fan of the state. And I mean, I would watch those state episodes over and over and over and over again. And when they, uh, when they were no longer producing stuff, I would just, I would scour the internet for anything that had anything with those guys. And then they came out with, uh, what was that group? It was like the three of them. It's called Stella. They had Stella. Yeah, and I was excited right. for that. And so when Wet Hot came out, I was like, let's go. And it totally lived up to that. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, such a, it's a great answer. I did not know about the state. And I didn't really know anybody in that movie besides like Jeanine Garofalo and uh, I don't know, maybe Michael Ian Black. But I was basically like absolutely floored the first time I saw the movie. I was in McDermott's apartment. I was in McDermott's apartment. Watched it on DVD, and I remember just being like, I, I can't handle how funny this is. <laughs> like, it's so funny. I, I can't even handle it. Uh, Skid, favorite summertime movie? Uh, well, first, a quick story about Stella, which I saw live in Brooklyn in like 2005 or something, and they were very funny. And they pulled this bearded Brooklyn guy up on stage to make fun of him for a little while. <laughs> And it was very funny. I didn't know the guy. Turns out, years later, that was Matthew Copel, our friend Matthew Copel. <laughs> no way. Who I hadn't met yet. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't meet him for a couple more years, but then we were talking one night and I realized like he was the guy that they would brought up on stage. Um, <laughs> anyway. That's so random. So, <laughs> um, but I have a couple spring to mind. One is Endless Summer. The documentary mm, about surfing, which yeah. is still phenomenal. I watched it on PBS when I was a kid and I lost my mind laughing. I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. And the other is uh, Do the Right Thing. Oh, oh God. Yeah. That's a great summer. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. Choice. It's like, are, are we, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I mean, there's no other movie that really replicates the feeling of that hot summer day just beating 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 down on you right i mean by the end of the movie you're sweating it's, it's crazy you don't Especially realize in new york until yeah. that movie how much heat contributes to racism <laughs> it's, it's actually true it, it really it's is true it. the it's only really, reason yeah. people are racist is because they're hot and sweaty <laughs> no, and but, like, but it don't, is a don't reason nobody clip that it's a, it's a reason why people go go crazy at the end of the day. It's like, yeah. you know, everyone's racist, but not everyone's fighting all the time. But if it's like, you know, Skid, really you want to know, uh, know a fun little fact? Sure. 
My mom worked on that movie. Oh, no, you told me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome. She, but- she's got the old school uh, crew jacket, like the cool crew jackets they used to do, like the leather letterman jacket. Oh, damn. And, it's, oh, and wow. it says uh, Spike, uh, well, what was his company called? Oh, 40 Acres. Oh, 40 Acres. 40 Acres, yeah. So she it has like the patches all over it. And then the back, it says, do the right thing. And like all these funky letters. Ooh. She pulled it out. She has a Malcolm X jacket. She worked on a lot of his films. Um, Is your mom Danny Aiello? <laughs> and her mom was Danny Aiello. <laughs> Sounds suspiciously like that Danny Aiello. Danny Aiello. <laughs> <laughs> People didn't know that about Danny. <laughs> it's I did actually, Steve Jobs. I spoke to Steve, uh, Spike Lee once. And it was he was doing a a talk back uh, after a, an evening, and I remember it was the same night as Oprah Winfrey was interviewing Michael Jackson on ABC. Whoa. So he opened the show. He's just like, I want to thank you all for being here and not watching Oprah. <laughs> and, like, Oprah. <laughs> and so he had this like talk back, and so people got up to like ask questions and stuff. And <laughs> I got up and I said like, well, first. I want to congratulate you for that first sex scene in uh, Jungle Fever (laughs) because, man, that was good. Uh, (laughs) You have a hidden talent, sir. You can start an entirely new industry just based off of that talent. (laughs) Everyone else is laughing and he just kind of smiled. (laughs) And And that was as close as he came the entire evening to to laugh. That is that is like a badge of honor skid. A white person making Uh, slightly smile even remotely. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's that's how I felt. That's a testament to your awesomeness. (laughs) Well done, Skid. A great answer. Uh, Sydney. I have two, because they're just very different. Against the Um, rules, but continue. mm, Okay. Uh, I think you're all going to agree about this one. Jaws. Oh, oh yeah. good one. Oh, classic. Oh, that was a fall movie. What? It's classic. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Classically that's overrated. <laughs> overrated, but it's a classic. I saw it it's when I was overrated. like far too young. Gave me nightmares. I love that movie. Uh, I think about and it. it also is like, it's so summer like it's oh. so like the mm, you yeah. just the way the shots are on the beach it, it looks like hard to even look at the screen yes. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's so, so bright. bright and uh, it looks so hot yeah so that definitely uh but then a sad movie a more modern sad movie because i gotta throw in a sad one uh call me by your name is also mm. very summer. i don't know that one oh uh, it's um well army hammer and uh oh, timothy yeah. chalamet but it's uh great it takes place in italy so it's kind of like a foreign summer film and it makes you nostalgic for something you never experienced, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, when I spent yeah. my summers in Italy. Is that but, the one uh, where he eats Timothy Chalamet in the movie? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Troy. Troy. I Troy. Troy. see that. Yeah. Yeah. Valley. Uh, uh, despite, eat you. Despite Army Hammer's uh, <laughs> whatever the fuck, uh, it is a good movie. It's a nice, sad summer movie. Nice. So I just like to cry in a, in a happy season. Are you okay? Yeah, okay. sometimes you want to just be sad. Yeah, Francis, do you like being sad in the summer, or are you are we going big action flick? What do you I'm got? I'm going big. A- well, I have t- I also have two, but I'm just going to do Jeter. one. Let's just do another <laughs> round. Do one. No, uh, I am going big action because this one was a definitive summer movie. Actually, two big actions: uh, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. Ooh. Is that a summer John? Oh. That was a super summer John. Uh, yeah. Specifically, Very I mean, sweaty all, movie. Yeah, all it was sweat, <laughs> like, wall to wall sweat, like sweaty, windows to the walls. Sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a lot of sweat, but it was also just like everything was hot. It, like all the the colors are really bright and warm. Mm-hmm. Everything it's just like hot, hot, hot. And I remember seeing it as like whatever it was, like a ten or eleven year old, and it was so intense when that guy ripped out that his that guy's heart. <laughs> I remember being so scared of that. I yeah. had to leave the theater. I swear to God, I was like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Stones will be found, Doctor Jones. Oh, yeah, you <laughs> won't. That guy scared the crap out of me. Mola Ram, Mola Ram, Mola Ram. Yeah. I yeah. like how as a sweet little kid, you're like. I don't think I'm old enough for this. <laughs> I gotta go. I'm gonna pull myself. I was with my parent. I think it was with my mom, and I was just oh like, my- I'm, I'm, I'm extracting myself from this situation. <laughs> I was like, I, I cannot. And I was the one that convinced her to take me. I was oh like, my Nope, God. sorry. <laughs> but I came back. I came back. I finished it. Is it nice. over, mom? I'm coming back. Strong. 
I think I asked like concession skit, the concession skit stand guy, like, is can I can I go back? Is it are they still <laughs> ripping hearts out? And they were like, no, no, you're good. <laughs> my mom's <laughs> neighbor took me to that movie. movie. <laughs> yeah, right. um, my mom's neighbor that? took me to that. My that's mom's right. movie. Sorry, my mom's neighbor took me to that movie, and I can't. I don't know why. She's a Vietnamese refugee. I don't know why she took me to that movie. <laughs> <You're> weird. <laughs> did she enjoy it? <laughs> I can't remember. I don't know if I did. <laughs> <laughs> you were like on like a weird like kind of parent date. Was that? What was I think that? so. I don't know. Maybe she just wanted me out of her hair. And it's like. <laughs> Call with the neighbor. Anyway, uh, remember. Joe, I was asking you, what, do you have one? Oh, yeah, yeah. I would go stand by me probably. Um, I love that. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's sad and stuff, but it's just like. What a, what a weird movie to watch as a kid. Like, it was just so intense. And I wasn't, it was all about kids, but it was so dark and stuff. And uh, I dug that. But it did make me, made me think when Skid, when you mentioned, uh, uh, um, uh, do, uh, what is it? Do your, uh, do, do the right thing. Do the right thing. I was thinking, do your own way. Do the right do thing. Do your own way. <laughs> I thinking of a Fleetwood Mac song. Yeah, that's, uh, right. that's a great Fleetwood Mac song. <laughs> you can do your own way. <laughs> uh, it was a weird title was, sequence. <laughs> it made me think of The Paper, which I've mentioned many, many times. It's like oh, one of my yeah, all-time yeah. favorite movies that also Sydney's mom worked on, uh, oh, yeah. I, I believe. Yeah, she did. Good yeah, and that is not, it, it's like summer isn't so much a character in that movie, but mm. it is set in the summer. And what made me think of it is when Troy spoke about uh, what heat or what you said about what the heat does to you. Like that movie, a lot of it hinges on it being a, a super, super hot summer day and the air conditioning being broken. And it's a big part of what drives the, the attitudes of all the characters that are stuck in this office building where it's like everybody's sweating and their tempers are all really short and everyone's yelling at everybody. And it's just like in one day, it's sort of like climaxes into like the breakdowns of the company and the relationships and everything and you can tell it hinges on that heat like yeah. when you're put into that boiler room kind of situation it's yeah. uh brutal did you brutal. ever see uh speak of, i think it was spike lee was it son of sam oh yeah, yeah. Summer that of was sam. all about the summer in new york and how it let like exacerbated the hysteria around uh the son of sam killings <laughs> yeah oh my God. Um, and i never saw that but that was spike lee as well huh that yeah. was a great that was a great movie it was really good and yeah, it, I really it, like that movie a lot. It fills in that theme of like summer driving people crazy in New York. Uh, Adrian Brody. <laughs> Adrian Brody was awesome in that. Yeah. Was he? Yeah. yeah. He seems like Spike a real Lee cool also, guy. <laughs> didn't Spike Lee also do Inside Man? He did yeah, Inside Man. Did. And that yeah. was yeah. in New York like in the summer. Also, movie yeah. that he's ever done. And yeah, it was set in New York. Not, I guess it was summer. Yeah. That yeah. I don't great. think summer plays a big part in it, but it really seems like summer. Yeah. Um, Francis, you had a second one. We cut you um, off. It was okay. Yeah, no, sorry, that was my other uh, s super blockbuster. It was a uh, Star Trek Three: Search for Spock. Because I, <laughs> oh, wow. I remember I went a field trip on my summer camp uh, <laughs> to see that, Aww. and it was it was packed. Like we came in late, and we had to like sit on like like the side because it was like totally sold out. It was crazy, um, but quality quality Search for Spock. I will Good forever memories. have that in my heart. Yeah, <laughs> good memories of summer. Are they going to yeah. find him? I know uh, it's crazy. It's good like times. Into, uh, number four, too, where they go back in time. Anyway, that's a whole other story. <laughs> well, you guys are going to be searching for some people very, very soon. Uh, at the end of last week's episode, we got a little drop that right at the very, very end of what is going on here, what operation you're about to walk into. Roger Cubstone, join the call. Oh my God. Roger, is Roger here? Roger, <laughs> Roger is Roger here? Uh, I'd like to speak to Roger now. Is Roger here with Roger us? Available? Uh, right at the end of last week, uh, you guys actually reunite after 20 years, barely have time to talk to each other as you go to the city of Boston and meet with a new handler on a new operation who has called you into the Gateway Bridges restaurant to discuss why after all this time this particular crew of four delta green agents some still active some really uh have been out of it for a long time why those four have been brought back and we got a uh, we got a tease as to why it was and you know what i feel like it was it was so short and it was such a big deal at the end that i'm i'm going to i'm going to go over that again in a second but first i i beg of you to bear with me for a scene! Oh. The scenes are the shit. Ooh. Delta Green. We open today's episode on a summer day. Hot. 
Summer day. <laughs> we open we open on a busy city street uh in fact it's 28th street northwest in washington dc it's warm but it's not too uh uh hazy because clearly in the distance as we come down and settle into the street we can see the capitol building we know that we're in washington dc and we can see our camera pants up the street and just across the street, up a little ways, we see a diner. And this becomes the center of our focus. And outside, it has a sign that says, The Anthem Diner. We cut to a closer shot just outside the door of the diner where a few pedestrians are passing by. And then a tall, salt and pepper haired African American man comes into view. He's wearing wire-rimmed glasses and holds a folded newspaper under one arm. We recognize this man immediately. He's the handler you're sitting with at the Gateway Bridges restaurant right now. But then a lower third pops up, a card pops up at the bottom that says 2009. So we're seeing something from this dude's past. Everybody's walking down the street. This guy grabs our attention because we know who he is. And instead of passing by the place, he stops, reaches for the door of the diner, pushes it open, and walks in. Now we cut inside and we see him choose a table off to his left. He sits down and opens up the newspaper. A server comes up to him and asks, you know, if he needs anything. And we hear him say, I need a minute, thanks. And she walks away. He turns to the young man sitting next to him at the table to his left. And you see that this man is wearing an American University sweatshirt with a blue windbreaker over it. It's Riker right. Solace. Oh, Whoa. no way. Whoa. <laughs> from here, we cut to a shot for shot replay of the scene from season one, episode two of yeah. Get in the Trunk. The man says to Riker, how's the soup today? Riker wipes the sides of his mouth and replies, a bit hot for my taste. The man sets his newspaper down, lowers his voice. In a matter of minutes, you'll get a call on your cell from your boss telling you that you've been assigned to an emergency case in New Jersey. This is an official FBI assignment, but you're really working this one. A contact, or you're really working with us on this one. A contact from the program will meet you at the Newark airport with more details. Look for a sign at baggage claim for the USGS seminar. That's your contact. Your flight leaves in two hours. He stands up and the server is coming back around and he like bumps into the server. He says, oh, excuse me, you know what? I was supposed to meet a friend here for dinner and I went to the wrong place. I'm so sorry. And he just pushes past her and walks out the door. But now we stay with him out the door and we tail him as he walks to his car. He pulls a flip phone from his pocket, flips it open and dials a number. We hear it ringing, it picks up, and then they just hear a male voice coming through on the other end. Yes, go. Our guy says, Bravo, Charlie, India, Oscar. There's a click on the line and a brief wait and while the man's waiting, he gets into his sedan and shuts the door behind him. A click on the other end, and then a woman's voice, a voice you may recognize, says, Yes. It's Exeter. Is it done? Yes. <sighs> How's he look? Young. Hmm. Yeah, well, we'll break him in fast. So is that it? Yes. I drove 450 miles to talk to a rookie for 30 seconds. I mean, <laughs> I'm not as young as that kid, so I know better than to ask questions, but is your outfit maybe getting a little paranoid? No, we just... This op is touchy. They're bringing in Messiah. <laughs> Messiah? Was he... Static? No. Alice. 95. Oh, shit. Yeah. Might be this Jersey thing is connected, so we want him there. If there's a connection, Messiah will root it out. 
There's a lot of dead people after Alice. Yeah, but no bodies. He's good. Is he? Well, I'll have to keep that in mind then. Silence on the other end. And then, he says, Is that really all you needed? If, if so, I'm heading home. And she says, Thank you, Exeter. We owe you one. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And he closes the phone, shakes his head, still kind of smiling, sets it down on the passenger seat, and then we see him pull out of this parking spot and drive off, merging onto 95 North. And then we cut back into the Gateway Bridges restaurant. We'll replay some of what happened last week. I love that when TV shows do that sometimes. It's like when it's the episode starts, it's the exact last 30 seconds or something of the previous episode, you know, and then like it continues. So that's what we see because this information is all too important. He says, thank you all for coming up. And now we see it's the same man that met with Riker Salas in a diner all that all those years ago, whatever. No, actually, it's not all those years ago. It's only six years ago now. He's a little bit older, a little more white in the hair. He says, thank you for making or answering the call. We've had an incident at a hospital here in Boston. A place called the Dorchester House. It is a mental hospital that's serving... But mostly um, patients that have uh, experienced post-traumatic stress, um, uh, paranoid schizophrenia, and other disorders that cause violent outbursts, those that might be a danger to others or themselves. The hospital is uh, an expert at this, and two patients have escaped the facility. These two patients happen to be Delta Green agents. The facility's owner and operator, Dr. Dallin, is a friendly. He is aware that some of his patients come from this program and is aware of some of what they experience. They are sent there to hopefully be treated and recover. Clearly it's not always successful, but we like to try. And as he's looking around, you can see a lifetime of Delta Green operations on this guy's face. You know, the weight of this kind of stuff. And you know what? You see it on your guys' faces, too, because you're all older. Everybody in, nobody in this room is a rookie. This is a, a veterans talking to veterans kind of conversation. And you may, not, you may have never known that there was a facility like this before where they would actually send agents to receive treatment for mental illnesses. He says... You specifically were called in because, well, take a look at this. He pulls a photograph out of his bag. He says one of the patients wrote this on the wall of their room before escaping. And they wrote it in their own blood. And he sets down this photograph. We put it on screen last week. And here it is again for you to examine. It is a picture of a wall that has newspaper kind of stuck up to the wall, fragments of newspaper, but then written over it in blood. It says, Abigail Wright has gone, Abigail Wright has gone to sea, cross the waves to rescue me. In a ship both tall and fine, she rounds the corner marking time. Every one of you in this moment must immediately make uh, or maybe Roger doesn't. You, Troy, you tell me. I'm not sure how far away you are. But the three of you that see this and see the name Abigail Wright being involved at all have to roll a sanity check out uh, of the gate. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is uh, for helplessness. Yeah, buddy. That's a what? 30 under there you 64. Go. Roger stays focused. Right in the zone. Uh, I never liked yeah. her. I never liked her. <laughs> Got a 34 under 65. Oh, man. Nice. Good start, Vicky. 48 over 44. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. man. Okay. Oh, man. I love it. And uh, Neil. I love it. Uh, I got a 60, 69. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you nice. did, dude. <laughs> All right. Uh, I say I love it because it became clear over the 20 year period as we did the, the gap here that like Bobby was getting worse and worse, really <laughs> deeper and deeper <laughs> into this stuff. And his sanity uh, is, has been chipped away and it's already probably the lowest of all of you. So uh, this is going to impact Bobby. So briefly, uh, Francis, what, what, how do we see this manifest? Uh, <clears throat> is there anything we notice on Bobby when he looks at this photograph? So immediately Bobby remembers his first Delta Green mission <clears throat> involving Abigail Wright and all the trauma comes back to him. <laughs> he remembers <laughs> the spiders. He remembers oh, the curb spiders. stomping that poor old lady in her, in her oh, apartment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he remembers <laughs> everything exploding that whole building. Uh, it was it was trauma and it, and it all comes rushing back. He thought he had a handle on it, but he's trying to he's trying to keep his composure. <laughs> And he's just getting more and more like tense. It's like <clears throat> mouth's getting dry. It, everything is is getting tense. But he's trying to trying to contain it. Trying to stay cool in front of everybody. Um, and then he he just has to ask. <clears throat> uh, these were two Delta Green agents that escaped. That is correct. <clears throat> um, what? Uh, how serious is the threat? The threat is as bad as it gets. We, I, am not aware of what they were exposed to. Perhaps Dr. Dallin is. But there is a fear, I'm sure all of you are aware, that any Delta Green agent loose in the field and off the reservation could do irreparable damage to humanity if they are not contained. The knowledge that they possess, I don't know the specifics of it, but if they spread that knowledge, it could be extremely dangerous. Perhaps He's... the agents them. Yes, I'm sorry, Messiah. You're right to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I was like trying to like <laughs> say something back serious and I just, I just tried I to can't, cover. I can't. When you say contain, I'm assuming you mean by any means necessary. Yes. Though our primary objective is to find these agents and return them to the hospital. Return. Unhurt. Uh, unharmed but should that not be possible you can see there's like a glassiness over his eyes then we need to make sure that they are that they can never share their knowledge ever is that clear why weren't these agents eliminated off off the top why did they get sent to this this what hospital is it to be honest i don't know i know that some agents can't take the exposure and must be dealt with some agents fall in the line of duty as some of you know it looks right at messiah and some agents are not so far gone that they cannot be brought back. This is what the Dorchester house is for. It gives us all hope. There's possibility to recover. Dr. Dallin is a good man, a friend, has been for a long time. Ahem. And, uh, yes, Maybelline. Sorry to interrupt. What was the operation that brought them to the facility afterwards? I'm, again, these things are not uh, information that I'm a privy to. Both patients, from what I understand, are not from the area. They were not a part of E-Cell. Oh. So I am not aware of their operations. 
I can tell you that this operation is India Moon. That is the code name you will use should you need to contact me. The the operation is a continuation of Operation Alice, thanks to the name of Abigail Wright. He reaches down and he pulls out this big, chunky, old ass looking phone. That's like a sat phone from like, I think of like Congo. Remember the movie Congo? <laughs> oh, yeah. They had yeah, like a big like a sat phone. Coast, they had the sat oh. phone, yeah. It's not quite that big. <laughs> Amy, but it, scared. It looks kind of like a. It looks kind of like a car phone from the '90s, kind of. Oh, yeah. He's calling like a rescue helicopter. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it looks like. He pulls it out. He says, "This has served me well for many years. It is does not use any of the known service providers out there." He sets it down on the table. It's a direct satellite phone that will call me or one of my associates here in E-Cell. If we are not reachable, it will be directed directly to A-Cell. No number needs to be dialed beyond the number you do have to dial, which I just forgot. <laughs> uh, talking in it's riddles. 616. It's, you just dial 616 and it will directly contact me or one of our associates in A-Cell. And he just passes it over to you. It is encrypted and untraceable. You will be entering the hospital under false identities. He goes again into his bag and he pulls out these folded wallets, passes them across. He says, the escaped patients is a matter that has come under the jurisdiction of the Massachusetts State Police Department. Stadies. And he begins <laughs> opening these wallets and it's a badge and an ID with your picture in it, one for each of you, that identifies you as a Massachusetts State Police Detective. Yes! <laughs> yes! Wow. He passes them over to you. What's my name? And I'd like to know what your name is! <laughs> uh, uh, now keep in mind, we're trying to not immediately get fi found out by anybody that uh, these are false identities. <laughs> I've got one. So chicken wing fart gobble is like, <laughs> probably people are going to ask questions about that state police oh, officer. Man. But you guys do you. <laughs> uh, I'd like to be Detective Mitsubishi Royale. <laughs> <laughs> Some people call me Mitzi. <laughs> Detective <laughs> Mitsubishi. <laughs> I, lo I love how like, I love how your, your answer was, I've got one. <laughs> like as if you had whittled it down, you had taken some time to think about it. Nice. My backup was Richard Karn. <laughs> that's good. You see, that's now that's normal. a good one. Not as fun as Mitsubishi Royale. It's an Karn. actual name, so it has an advantage there. Detective Mitsubishi Royale. <laughs> I've got mine. I've got mine. Since this is the Boston area, I'm going to go uh, with Special Detective Michael Bivens. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael Bivens. Bivens. <laughs> you know what that's about. I love that. <laughs> now you know. Now you know. You're slick. slick. Well, low. <laughs> <laughs> what is that from? This is Bell Biv DeVoe. He's, oh, he's the oh. uh, Biv. He's, he's the Biv. 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 He's Biv. Michael Bivens. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Detective anybody, Michael Bivens. It's like, aren't you? No, I'm not. The not. perfect <laughs> identity. Someone who <laughs> already exists. <laughs> exactly. Common, common mistake. I didn't get know Michael all the time. Bivens was a state police detective. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Me? I'm Detective George Clooney. No, not that one. I get that all the time. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> uh, does Neil have one yet? Yep. Uh, William Costigan Jr. <laughs> oh my God. That's great. You're not a statey. You're, you're an astronaut guy. You're not a statey. Do I want to be a cop or do I want to appear to be a cop? That's the question. <laughs> it's exactly. a question. Gotta love that. That's awesome. You are not a cop. You are not what a is cop. Your, uh, and we have, last but not least, Vicky. Yeah, she's going to be Detective Penelope Isotope. 
<laughs> Penelope <laughs> Isotope. I know that. Penelope Isotope. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy cracking herself up. It's just right, dumb time. enough to work. <laughs> yeah, I, I love when we get to make up names. I love yeah, it. They've got Royale and Isotope on this one. <laughs> 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 License and registration, please. It's <laughs> Well, well apparently is. Agent Exeter is uh, is pretty clever uh, in uh, the names that he comes up with. Um, I'm going to drop uh, a, a photo onto the board here uh, of Agent Exeter. Ooh. Let's see if this works. Is it a tasteful nude? No, it didn't. <laughs> uh, oh, there it goes. Joe, there he I'm not, is. I'm not seeing the board, actually, as my screen. I don't know if anybody yeah. else is. In. Oh, oh, shit. I moved either. it over and it didn't work. Oh, Sorry. Okay. Ah, here we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Right. I was yeah, you should have seen the Abigail Wright thing oh. again, too. I apologize. That's all good. Oh, nice. Cool. Oh, so, so yeah, that's him. there's Agent Exeter. Exeter. And um, he passes out these identifications to you. He says, Dr. Dallin is aware of your real identity and your real purpose. None of the other staff are. None of the other staff know that they treat agents of Delta Green. These identities are primarily for them so that they are not aware of what's really going on here. But as I said, behind closed doors with Dr. Dallin, you're fine, you can drop the facade. But otherwise, please keep up these identities for the staff. If you take these identities outside of the hospital for any reason, if that's necessary to speak with anyone else, particularly law enforcement, I urge you to tread carefully. Mm. I have arranged these IDs, and they are not very strong. If they are looked into deeply, they will be quickly found to be fraudulent. If you are arrested for impersonating an officer, there is nothing I will be able to do to help you. So tread lightly. Use them carefully. Dr. Dallin is expecting you to visit the hospital at your convenience, hopefully as soon as tomorrow. Do you have any other questions? Will we get a vehicle? Weapons? You will have to arrange for that yourselves. I apologize. I... I do not have that level of pull with the Massachusetts State Police at the moment. Uh, there good. seems to be a lot of um, additional officer involvement within the program. Is there anybody else on this that we should be aware of? Anybody else on what? This operation? Yes. Not to my knowledge. I was told to bring you in. I was told that you had a connection. And I remember being told some years ago that you in particular, Messiah, are good at getting the job done, particularly when people need to go missing and not be found again. That is why you've been chosen. Please find these agents and bring them home safe. Um, oh, can I can I clarify sorry, something? Hold, hold, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, so th this is this has not been actually reported to the police. So there's no one else looking that like that they have been reported as missing missing persons. We can say Neil asked that. Yeah. Yeah. And and he'll be like, yes, Doctor Dallin reported this to me immediately, knowing the identities of the agents, and. I I was able to hold off any other investigation for the time being. I don't know how long it will last though, particularly with the staff. The staff have been told that the state police are on their way, but it has been a couple days, so they may be getting suspicious. Move quickly. Also, I was able to wrangle one piece of information from Dr. Dallin. This goes to your earlier question, Maybelline, about what operation they were a part of. While I do not know the answer to that, what I do know is that one of them was a, was, um, oh my God, what's the word when you are, uh, when you're 
<laughs> not enrolled in a hospital. What are you in a hospital? Admitted. 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 One of the patients, one of the agents was admitted was for exposure to a book of some kind, an occult text. We don't know the details of that text, but you are to find out or identify any occult texts that either of these agents may have on them. You must report the existence of any such occult texts to me and anything beyond the briefest look at them to just identify them as occult books is prohibited. You cannot read these books. Is that clear? We have no words, idea what they can do to your mind. In other words, the mission is to destroy them if we find them. But not before reporting them. <laughs> I need to know. Bless you, Messiah. <clears throat> Thank you. Religion, Whether you destroy the talk them of occult books. or return them to me is fine either way. But do not read them. Sorry, I was sneezing. You want us to heavily read these books? <laughs> that is the opposite of what I said. I got you. Sorry. <laughs> he's, he's clearly not the brains of our team. That's okay. Nope. Now, perhaps we can actually enjoy a meal. Are you hungry? No. No. All set. Are we done here? <clears throat> if you wish to leave, yes. We're done here. Right um, now. sorry, go shift. And he leaves. Did he not say Maybelline? <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, so much. He uh, walks out the door. <laughs> Got allergies. Summer allergies. <laughs> As he walks out, Neil, I want you to roll a sanity check. Okay. Boy. Oh my god. I I'm not kidding. I rolled a 69 again. Nice <laughs> <laughs> uh, out of the gutter. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Uh you realize that without knowing it, you've been fiddling with a cocktail napkin on the table. You've just been kind of like pinching it slightly in your hand and folding at it and you realize you've been doing this without thinking about it and Neil looks down and we slowly zoom in on the cocktail napkin and we see a gold stylized embroidery on the napkin G B presumably for Gateway Bridges restaurant uh -huh. and yet seeing this napkin and seeing the embroidery immediately causes in Neil a recollection of seeing a napkin exactly like this in Abigail Wright's apartment with a sketching on it of some sort of machine. Do you remember this, Skid? It was a machine uh -huh. and it had a word in Portuguese Yeah, that was right. written on it and Neil translated it and the right. word was lion. It was like Liao or something like that in Portuguese. Yeah. And it was Lion. Wait, refresh my memory though. What was the machine? Do you remember Skid? Well, I know that was the, the incubator, but this was something. Oh, I forgot. It was, it was a stuff. sketching. Yeah, it was a yeah, sketching yeah, yeah. of a machine that you could not identify what it did. But I believe with further inspection, it was like an impossible machine, basically. Mm. Like the way that it was like built or drawn. It was almost like a. Uh, like a Rube, Gold, Rube Goldberg. Rube Goldberg uh, machine? Uh, I, I'm not, I don't know what that reference is. It was like an M.C. Escher oh, painting right. kind of oh, yeah, thing yeah. in okay, that way, okay. where like the, the way that it connected and the way things moved, like it was not physically possible. However, it was drill, it was drawn like an, like a blueprint, not like a piece of art. So it's a very kind of odd uh, thing. And you recognize it was on embroidery exactly like this with G.B. And this was in Abigail oh. Wright's apartment. Oh, shit. Mm. Wow. And I did, I I share, like everyone else saw this sketch at the time, right? I mm -hmm. shared it with everyone. Yeah, it was cataloged. Yeah, it, it was, was when we did mm -hmm. that first search, right? Yeah. 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 I might actually, I think Neil actually took 
like he when we, when we were going on this mission like he went through his stuff and he collected all of the polaroids that he took during that first investigation of course all the ones we took on the night floors are blank and useless but the ones that have images on them like a, he just like went through his like these old boxes and like gathered them all so i think and he brought them with him to this meeting like his little his little valise and he like pops it open and he's like going through it and he puts the polaroid of the sketch next to the napkin and shows it shows everybody look on uh roll 20 oh yes oh that's so cool it's a picture oh oh cool the fucking thing (laughs) <laughs> oh, awesome oh that's awesome whoa <laughs> and wow. then the napkin at the at the bar now in comparison as we look it's the same exact napkin yeah it's the same exact napkin oh that's holy crap wow i did yeah okay now i'm remembering the letters and like not knowing what they were and now so neil wow. showing the a uh, me maybelline this 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 Polaroid right now. And Exeter, because he's still yeah. there, I guess. I would oh. say Exeter is kind of That's packing ex- up. He's oh, like, okay. he's not paying attention. Once Roger walked out and he said that was it, if you guys don't want to eat, he's going to like move on. So he's not looking at this at the moment as, Neil, you set it down and compare the two. Yeah. Vicky kind of goes wide. Out. Again, like seeing this, like she yeah. hasn't had these photos on her person. She has her own case file that she looked through and held on to, but like seeing this, she kind of goes wide eyed and she looks at makeshift and she looks at Murnau Bobby's gripping the edge of his seat real quick but but he's not he's keeping it cool up top leather cushion squeaking underneath as you rip (laughs) is this Murnau is this an original from when we were there good luck says Agent Exeter and starts to walk out of the room call me if you need anything bye and he lowers his head. He's a tall man. He lowers his head and steps out through the door. And now you guys, you three are alone. And Murnau just takes his two long bony fingers and points one at the GB in the photograph and one at the GB on the napkin. Just taps them. Bobby says to Neil, that was from... Abigail Wright's apartment, wasn't it? Nods. Now all three of you have to roll a sanity check. Ah. <laughs> Way to go, Neil. Way to expose everyone. It's a Neil. lot. <laughs> and I lose it. Just admit me to a hospital after this. 60, oh. 61 under 65. 25 under 44, I think. Oh, okay. Yes. okay, all right, good. Neil? Uh, 53 over 41. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you take one point uh, of sanity loss. Yeah. Oh wait, I didn't give you one point before when you said sixty nine because I considered that a success for some reason, <laughs> but that is a fail. Yeah. It's a success in our book. But but yeah. it's you don't take a point for the second sixty nine roll, just for the uh, the first one. So you okay. you would be down two points. Okay. And I I I'm not long for this already. Game. <laughs> I know. I'm not long for this adventure because I, I, yeah. you have to go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Do what yeah, Vicky like, did. Go to therapy and put it all on them. That's true. Good. That's a good idea. Um, Vicky says she kind of like covers the Polaroid almost as if people are like watching or something. She like puts her hand over it. Maybe she doesn't want to see it. Um, and she says, "Okay, Th- okay, so." Let's say hypothetically, Abigail came to Massachusetts. It could have happened. This isn't that strange. Um, but it does mean that perhaps there's a much wider net than we originally thought. Um, I, I, uh, should get going back to my uh, hotel um, to prepare because we're going to go tomorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. First thing. Right. We can't waste any time. Will you be able to get in touch with Messiah and let him know? Uh, no. Very good. We'll have to get word to him too to let him know 
where we're going to meet. That would be great. Do we have to call Exeter to let him know? He just left. <laughs> How do we get in touch I, with the I do not know why Messiah <laughs> walked away so fast. <laughs> he, he missed a lot of it. Pertinent information. He saved himself a sanity check. I think he knows. Uh, right. He's got to go to the hospital in the morning. Um, yeah. That's clear. Do we have like outfits, like state trooper outfits as well? Ooh. No, you're we'll detectives. You oh, right. We're in. So we're you can be plain, plain clothes, clothes, but you just okay. have your badges. Um, Bobby, uh, you might have lost time in that meeting. You might yeah. have been, you know, I, when you were like flashing back to all the horrible shit and losing that sanity point. You must have missed uh, entirely when uh, Agent Exeter just put right in front of you a, a business card, uh, and it's just sitting there now. It's like it, oh. it's like it appears uh, out of nowhere. Mm. And uh, hold on, I have it here. It is oh. right under his picture. So I disassociated a little bit there. So. <laughs> exactly. So all of a sudden, you look down, and you've got this card uh, in front of you. Got it. So that you have information on where to go. Okay. All right. Sometimes things become possible if we want them bad enough. That's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it says that on the card. That's um, great. I love that. <laughs> all right. So we know where to go. Let's say we meet back here tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. We drive out. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. I'm sure we could get a coffee or something nearby. Yep. I'll uh I'll get us a vehicle. Just get here. Um I have my own gun, but uh I'm not sure what you guys rock with these days. I can procure some weapons. Neil, did you need one as well? I don't carry a gun. Well, that's on you then. Uh, hopefully we won't need uh, so, it. So, sorry, hold on a second. Just just to reiterate, uh, I, you don't know his name is Neil, right? Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> I'm also kind of just asking, like, you Your don't know that. Your name is Neil? Your name right. is Neil. I just <laughs> figure you look like a Neil. Uh, <laughs> you just look like a Neil. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, your name's actually Neil? Good yeah, yeah, That Neil is crazy. <laughs> That's insane. Um, Murnau, you, you will be without a weapon on this mission. Hmm. All right. That's your choice. Well, ideally, we wouldn't have to uh, use force in that way. I don't handle ideals anymore. Um, I'll see you tomorrow morning. And um, it's good to see you both. Sure. Wow. Wow. And Vicky uh, just kind of nods, and then uh, she also leaves. Ding, ding. How strange. This is so strange and tense. There's no, like, reunion happiness. There's no, like, good to see you. No there way. was when well, we initially saw it, but the, after this, yeah. after seeing this, this imagery and, like, yeah. getting the There's mission no and everything. Love here. Yeah, it's yeah. also, like, I was happy to see Murnau. Like, it was nice for a, a fucking second, and yeah. then Messiah <laughs> was there, and it got messy, and then, yeah. like, seeing the photos, it's just, oh, like, God. Tough. Yeah. Uh, this too is, much. This is too ugly. much. This is gonna be ugly. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. By the Bobby. way, uh, I want to point out. So there are two reasons why I think Murnau would not own a firearm. One is just as a doctor. It's a sort of antithetical to his beliefs. Right, that makes sense. But two, like he's afraid that if he owns a gun, it is going to be too easy for him to kill himself. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. With that's your sanity real. down that low, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's real. Yeah, that is. That's tough. Um, okay. With Vicky getting up and saying, "I'll see you tomorrow." Goodbye. Bobby just says, "Sure." And Vicky walks out of the room. And with that, we'll take a quick break and we'll come right back.
As we open back up again, there's just Bobby and Neil now are in the, <laughs> this sad, sad birthday party for Richard Zaloni. <laughs> <laughs> Do the two of you say anything to each other before you get up? Well, uh, we may as well order a couple of drinks. Otherwise, this looks like a real sad birthday party. <laughs> uh, uh, makeshift waves over a waitress. Uh, I'll take a whiskey uh, neat, please. Murno? Uh, and he's just sort of out of it a little bit. He's just like a grasshopper or the equivalent. <laughs> Whip it up and grass on. That's great. And she walks away. <sighs> Looks like the night floors are not done with us yet. So it seems. And then and let's he, flash. He let's, fl his, let's just sorry. flash there. We'll come back to you guys okay, okay. when your drinks come. Let's flash there to Roger. What did Roger do after he left? He uh, went outside, and uh, he's just uh, sitting in his car, like across the street from the entrance to the restaurant. Uh -huh. He's just uh, like leaning on the steering wheel. thinking thinking about everything oh, man. but he doesn't drive away he doesn't drive away he's not particularly waiting per se but he's not he walked out of there all tough and now he's in the car kind of thinking and Vicky walks out of the restaurant where does she go uh, she walks out and uh, she takes a beat and she just kind of stands outside in the sun and uh, vapes for a sec it's 8.30 at night. Fuck. No more sun. Uh, it's just a little cold. Like, oh, oh, it was a sun. chill comes over her in the moonlight. Um, vaping in the moonlight. And then uh, she's going to look either way, get her bearings, and then walk to the nearest tea station to head back over to Cambridge for the night. And... You know, I, I don't know where this restaurant is in Boston, but I imagine there's an Irish pub like right next door. Of course. <laughs> people are just outside, you know, fuck you. And like she kind of looks over and crushing smokes. Absolutely. Yeah. It reeks. It's <laughs> awesome. Uh, and she just kind of looks for a second and uh, shakes it off and puts her vape in her bag and then heads towards the tea. Okay. We'll come back inside, uh, and there our drinks are being delivered to you two. Um, down in front of Bobby, down in front of Neil. What do you guys talk about? I thought the only way out was through. Didn't we go through? Well, I think we did go through, but as you pointed out, Maybe it's not through with us. What was the name of the birthday that we're attending right now? The Robert? Richard? What Richard Zaloni. Richard Zaloni. To Richard Zaloni. Curse the day you were Zaloni. born, that bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Never hated anyone so much in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, uh, dick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with you two taking a sip of your drink, we'll, we'll fade out of that. And uh, you guys want to cut to the next morning? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I, so Bobby's going to use this contact to requisition a, a fake statey vehicle. I guess does it oh, even need to say Stady on it? No, or, it no, could, no like a black car. Yeah, like, like, like a, a black you know, suburban or something. Exactly, yeah. or like oh. the Crown Vic, whatever they use. No. Um, oh, that's so um, cool. Roll, bureaucracy roll is that for requisitions? Sure, you can do that for okay. this one. Yeah. All right. Oh, my bureaucracy is so strong. Uh, I got I got a sixty bureaucracy. Let's do this. 
40, oh no, 84, damn it. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Damn. I was trying oh, to flex no. my bureaucratic muscle. Get a hot wire one. Oh okay. no. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get, uh, I'll get a, uh, oh, um, yeah, I'll just, I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean they won't give me a car. I, or I can't. No, it just means you get a black Hyundai Elantra. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You just get a, you, a yeah, you get a, you get a black sedan. It's fine. Okay. All you right, you all can right. pick what it is. Um, okay. You it's get it, but uh, I will, your failure is noted. <sighs> just be aware. <laughs> oh, uh, Jesus. You, you pulled some strings uh, to, to get that car for an operation in Boston, but there is no operation in Boston. Uh, so maybe your trail is not going to, maybe your trail might lead to you, uh, you know, requisitioning something for personal use. So we'll see. Okay. We shall see. Okay. Um, and then make sure you check off bureaucracy. Got it. Um, all right, great. And all right. So you're going to get a, a, a car now. Does Roger, Roger, you're just. What are you going to do in the morning, Roger? <laughs> Roger wakes up early, 4.30 a.m., oh four thirty, and uh, drinks an entire pot of coffee and then goes uh, to the hospital and uh, sits in his car and waits. <laughs> he goes, to, he goes to the... Uh, okay. <laughs> how, how do you know where the hospital is? Uh, the... Exeter said <laughs> where it was. He did not say where it was. He left a business card <laughs> that business you card. left without. <laughs> he did I just start driving to lots of hospitals until I see <laughs> <laughs> for the lunch you find the three of them. You missing any crazy guys? Is Dr. Dallin here? <laughs> the fifth hospital I've been to. Dallin. <laughs> I don't know how to spell it. He's uh, a doctor. I, <laughs> Couldn't I look up Dallin and see what hospital he's associated with? Because he did say the name Dallin while I was yeah, there. Yeah, he did. And we do have the internet one. And you have the name yeah. of the hospital. It's the Dorchester House. Yeah. So you're going to Google it. Yeah. Is what you're saying. <laughs> Roger Googles it. He goes to an internet cafe because he doesn't believe in having the internet in his home. You're Googling it on a public computer. <laughs> okay. So he, goes to, he goes to an Apple store. Because <laughs> they clear the caches on they those things. They blast those cash every day. He just like walks in the Apple store smoking a cigarette. Oh, sir, 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 can sir. I, oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm going to have to ask you to put out the cigarette. No apologies necessary. And he keeps walking. <laughs> sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sir, sir, sir. Yes. There is no smoking in the store, sir. I'm sorry. Could you put that out, please? And then you can smoke when you leave. Here, can you take care of this? Sure. <laughs> Where are the computers that have internet? <laughs> right downstairs sir right downstairs uh, you can ask for Micah Micah will help you All right. and then uh, he walks up uh, to take your cigarette outside <laughs> you absolute piece of shit he goes down the winding staircase to the uh, lower level uh, and walks up to some dude are you Micah Yes, I am. Pleasure to meet you. Where are the computers with internet? <laughs> um, <laughs> these all have internet, sir. Right here. All Feel right. free to browse and let me know if you have any questions at all, okay? All right. And he just walks away and you're left at this computer. Give me a search roll. Oh, my best skill. <laughs> eight. I rolled an eight. Oh, crushed it. You rolled double an o eight. Double O eight, because he's a spy. Yeah. He's a spy. Isn't that Daniel? Uh, no, um, Sean Bean. Was Sean, Sean Bean, Bean is double O so, eight. Yeah. Double O yeah. eight. Oh yeah. And Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Uh, so he starts for England. Clicking Roger. around for England, Jake. Dallin, Doctor, PhD, Hospital, Boston, <laughs> Photos, <laughs> Nude. News. <laughs> in quotes. News. <laughs> What's it in quotes? <laughs> Amazing. Um, you uh, you get a hit on Google and it brings up a, a homepage for uh, the facility and you see that it it's a you know, well made, well designed uh, website. It looks like a you know professional, uh, you know fully accredited psychiatric hospital that focuses uh, on the treatment of violent 
mental illness. Big gun. Um, it, uh, it, it sort of, it says that it specializes in uh, people <clears throat> that um, are in high risk groups, people like uh, military veterans, uh, medical field veterans, law enforcement veterans, fire uh, and rescue members, uh, first responders, all of these kind of people that may uh, at some point suffer from some mental illness. This is this this hospital is kind of focused on these sort of uh, of, of treatments. Um, do you think Roger goes clicking around or do you think he's looking for an address, uh, a, 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 you know, a street address, and then he's just getting out of there? He gets the street address and then clicks on, uh, like, hotel staff, goes down to D, see if there's a photo of this Dallin fella. Uh, yeah. So, first of all, it's not a hotel. It's a hospital. Uh, very <laughs> different sorts of uh, facilities. Did I say hotel? <laughs> 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 I knew it started with an I H. I book a room. Yeah. I, first, I book a room. This the Dallas like Suite is nice it's available. Room. <laughs> Let's see if I get a late checkout. How many stars <laughs> does this hotel have? <laughs> this hotel sucks. There are no rooms. Available. Uh, sure. Yeah, you you can research and you see that there is a whole page in the about section. There is a whole page, uh, uh, or is the there is a, a list uh, under staff, but only. Um, Dr. Dallin is on there. He's sort of like kind of the primary physician, uh, psychiatric doctor, and the only one, it seems, uh, on staff. Uh, and if you go to the board, uh, you will see that I've added the picture that you see uh, on the website of Dr. Dallin. Um, oh, seems yeah. like a nice man. Nice seems looking fellow. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> Looks normal. He's not from hell. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be a denizen of hell. I hope not. Uh, and it gives, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's it's a praising bio uh, of this guy and his uh, acquisition of the hospital. His um, where did he go to school? He went to. Um, I don't know. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. <clears throat> It doesn't say. Uh, it just. Strange. It just says that he uh, has. What type of hotel doesn't list the doctor's <laughs> degrees? <laughs> it uh, it gives links and shows to several uh, journals that he has written and published uh, in the field of psychiatric medicine. He uh, appears to be an expert in the area of PTSD. Um, Particularly, as I said before, like the hospital is this, but it, Dr. Dallin is an expert in the treatment of PTSD in military and first responders. Um, yeah, Roger probably knows guys that he served with that like have talked to doctors like this, and there may have been people in his life uh, that have uh, recommended that he seek out the services of a doctor like this. So maybe there's a part of Roger that is mildly intrigued. Um, and there wants is to know a, a little um, bit more about this guy. Oh, okay. Uh, if you're intrigued and you dig a little bit more, uh, you, like specifically searching his name outside of the website, you do see hits in on, on psychiatric publications, uh, articles that he has written. Um, you see in some of the articles, it mentions his full name, which is Dr. Richard Forrest Dallin, F-O-R-A-S. Uh, it doesn't have that on the main site, but that's his his full name, Doctor Richard F. Dallin, and he. Um, you find social media accounts as well, like he's got a Twitter, he's got a Facebook. Uh, you know, nothing shocking in terms of uh, followership or anything like that, but you do see pictures of him, just kind of. Um, being normal in Boston, I guess, is the best way to put it. Like, he seems to live a, a fun social life. Uh, you see him with friends. You see him with people in in Red Sox gear. You know, you see him out uh, at restaurants, etc. Um, and there's, yeah, there's all kinds of uh, content like this uh, in, and, in and around the Boston area on his social media. Sox fan. <laughs> Sox fan. I already don't like him. 
<laughs> Besides, I don't think I can go on with this mission. <laughs> All right, he, he, he uh, clears the browser history and uh, leaves. I'll also say you see, as part of this, because if you're eight on search, you see no indication of uh, a wife or children. You don't see any indication of a relationship at all. Um, but lots of big smiles, lots of uh, Red Sox gear. And uh, yeah, seems like generally like a happy-go-lucky guy. He's married to the job. Married to the job. Exactly. I know well, that. well put. Um, all right. So you do this research at the Apple store uh, and find out this information. And that's how you know where to go. And you head to the hospital. When you arrive, the hospital is almost like a, it's almost like a mansion, except it's, it's a little more boxy. So it doesn't just look like a house, but it also doesn't look quite as cold as a hospital. It has like an old school architecture uh, art about it, where it seems like it's three buildings almost that are uh, that are attached. So think of it like a big E kind of, mm -hmm. and it's up in the distance, uh, up on a hill, pretty far away. And where you are is a large gate that says uh, it has a stylized thing over it that says the Dorchester house and you see uh, a guard post and it appears to be uh, a guard inside and it's rather far from the hospital it's like a, a long drive up a hill to get to the actual facility and it's gated from the street and from this gate this 10 foot high fence uh, like I wrought iron fence, like black with the pointed kind of needles at the top. You know, that's how mm -hmm. goes all around the grounds, like for a, a long distance. So uh, as you pull up to it, there's nothing else near it. And uh, you're, there's no other cars even near it. And so if you sort of, sort of if you sort of just park and sit outside the gate, uh, it, your car is kind of obvious sitting there. Yeah, no, I'll pull up to the comm box and buzz it if there is one. There isn't one. There's actually a um, a, uh, a guard station. A guard station. Um, okay. And you see what has all the ear markings of a security guard, uh, male, early 40s, um, steps out and up to the side of your car. Good morning. And, Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, uh, I'm Detective Mitsubishi Royale. I am... Uh, <laughs> I have a, an appointment with uh, Dr. Dallin. Uh, I have some of my colleagues uh, meeting me, uh, but uh, I got to learn. And you're early. I am, yeah. Uh, can so, I see some uh, identification? Absolutely. He takes your wallet, opens it up. Just a minute, detective. Warm he steps. out today, huh? What's that? Said it's warm out today. Yeah, yeah, it's a hot one for September. Do you have He's... air conditioning in your uh, guard station? <laughs> I wish. I wish. Maybe I can talk to somebody. Picks up a phone. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> and he turns back. He's talking on the phone. Um, roll a search. <laughs> Who are you going to talk to? Oh. <laughs> gonna talk How's to... a uh, 99? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, oh, no. so with, with, a, with a critical bat. fail, you don't hear a single word said. He sort of turns off to the side. You see him kind of nodding, talking, nodding, talking. Looks back at you. Nodding. Gives a thumbs talking. up. He hangs up the phone, uh, walks out with the identification, folds it. You're good to go. Head up the hill there, parking lots on the right, and uh, you can head into reception there and uh, let him know that you're here to see Dr. Dallin. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't catch your name. My name is Albert Anselstock. <laughs> well, Mr. Anselstock, I uh, appreciate your time. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he opens up this gate. And this big gate opens up. And Roger's car just slowly goes <laughs> up this drive, and we pull back as we see the house in the distance and this tiny car driving up the drive toward it. 
and then the gate <laughs> closes. I've got this weird awesome. feeling like that this is the entire season. We're going to go inside this hospital and never leave. <laughs> <laughs> Just like sick of chilling. Check in anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to the rest of you? Uh, talk to me. Talk to me. Who's in charge of this group? Oh, this well. ragtag group of three. Is Bobby uh, taking the well, lead because he's yeah. got the car? Makeshift's got the car. I got the keys. Yeah. I'm driving. I got the car. <laughs> Gonna meet uh, at the restaurant there. Before before yeah. meeting at the restaurant, Vicky goes to Pavement Coffee on Newberry Street, and uh, she gets a death cream for herself, which was my favorite coffee when I lived in Massachusetts. That sounds and delicious. And it's so sweet. She gets a death cream, and then she instinctively <laughs> buys a black coffee. And then as soon as she says it, she's like, "Uh, actually, uh, make that three, uh, three, just three, black coffees." And she. Gets all the coffee. Now she's ordered too many coffees. <laughs> yeah. Gets all the coffees and she makes it to the restaurant. She's like, uh, if anybody's there, you know, she's like, hey, hey, you know, got coffee. All right. Yep. Uh, Bobby pulls up in a black crown Vic with uh, the little uh, one of those little bubble uh, ones that you could like sirens that you could put on top. He's got it in the, in the, in the, in the wow. windshield because that's crucial. Uh, <laughs> pulls up right in front of the restaurant uh, sees Maybelline and she gets into the passenger's seat uh, good morning and she gives him a coffee morning he takes a coffee where's Murno? I just got here I didn't see anybody did you make contact with both of them to Murno? He knows what to do. Uh, Messiah, he is MIA. He's on his own. Of course. Do you get any s- sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any dreams? <laughs> None that I want to talk about right now. Okay. Are you still together with um Oh, I don't know about her. Never mind. Yeah, I don't yeah, ask that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it on the coffee. Good coffee, huh? It's good. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I think yeah. All right. All right. Good talk. Uh <laughs> now. I thought you were picking me up at the hotel. Are we, oh, am I picking up? Oh, sorry. Do we, we had a few drinks. I don't know. Right? We sat there for 10 minutes, yeah. and then you're like, we had a oh, few drinks. Yeah. Oh, picking him up. That's where Bernal is. Just remembered. Oh. Uh, yes, we're going to go pick him up at the hotel. Great. I'm glad we had this time. Good talk. Good talk. Hang on. He throws the cherry on top. So he's doing 80 down the street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's flexing for the hell of it. My coffee. Yeah. Keeping a low profile <laughs> in every low respect. Pro- I'm a stady. This is how stadies do. Come on now. <laughs> he gets, pulls up to the uh, the hotel where Murnau stay. Were you and waiting outside, Murnau? Yeah, I'm waiting outside. Because we're late. <laughs> yeah. Hop in. I've got like a pretty s- stylish snake skin duster on like all <laughs> state police detectives do yeah oh my god yeah yeah what yeah. are you wearing bobby uh oh i'm uh, i'm wearing a off the rack uh jc penny suit nice uh, like <laughs> brown with a tan tie <laughs> just like i'm trying to get a stadium and just some like you know pay less shoe source uh like fake patent leather sh- shoes i'm ready nice <laughs> vicky's in a hot pantsuit <laughs> she's still rocking pantsuits. She looks good in them. Why hey, fix hey. something if it ain't broke? And she's got exactly. on clicky heels. She put on her nice heels uh, for no reason. All right. If we, <laughs> they make her le- they make her legs and butt look really good, but for no reason. <laughs> we uh, if we need a, a honey pot, we got you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm just wearing a, like a black tie and a white shirt, and I've got my medical bag with me. Nice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're driving and uh you guys head out with the three of you together in the car you've got maybe 15 minutes or so uh in this drive to get there do you is there anything that you talk about or is it kind of a quiet drive i think vicky also googles on her phone you know it figuring she'll do it in the morning on the drive she also googles <laughs> dr richard f dallin um and perhaps you know discovers the same information or if you want me to roll uh but yeah, go ahead. Roll okay. search. Roll search. 
Ba -ba. Ooh, 17 under 53. Yeah, as you look through, you don't um, you don't find out anything different about Dr. Dallin oh. than what um, I've already told you. Can I... So, uh, Bobby's going to use... Let's say he did this last night. He's going to use his CIA contacts to get more info on Dr. Dallin. Get more background. Okay. That seems like something uh, he would do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, roll a bureaucracy at a plus 20%. Okay. Ooh. Bureaucracy at plus it's not a really 20. big ask. Okay. All right. 66 under with a 20% 70. Nice. Wow. Perfect. Yeah. Crit. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Crit. <laughs> it was a crit. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So you dig into it or you, you send that request off and let's say in the morning, uh, you do get uh, a nice chunk of information. Um, upstanding citizen uh, pays his taxes, uh, is uh, known for this hospital, um, purchased the hospital uh, in conjunction with a, um, there's like a decent amount of financial information here that you'll get, you know, from the CIA, uh, where, you know, where you find out that the, um, that he purchased this building, which used to be a school. It was a school like back in the day. Like, I think it was like an all boys school or something like that back in the day. And, uh, it went through some changes, but he ends up purchasing it, uh, in the eighties. And you see that it partially, this is funded by something called the St. Dimpha Foundation, Dimphna Foundation, D Y M P H N A. The St. Dimpha Foundation is um, the financial backer uh, of this, uh, of his desire to buy this hospital or this school and turn it into a hospital. Uh, for three years, it was renovated and then it opened in 1989 uh, and has been open since then it has a stellar reputation as a psychiatric hospital um, it's rather expensive so you know you kind of uh, have to be kind of well off in order to even uh, be a patient there and um, yeah otherwise you know in terms of what your CIA contacts give you it's you know if you follow the money you see it's backed legally and it's he's paying his taxes and he's also uh doesn't have a criminal record and yeah okay trust right. this guy i don't trust this guy <laughs> I, so i share all that what's with, not to trust laval <laughs> doctor is it just because he's a Sox fan because i could get behind that analysis <laughs> yeah. trust dr dick dallin <laughs> Dick Dallin. Dr. Dick Dallin. Oh, There's a little too idea. much Dick Dallin for my case. <laughs> uh, do you discuss any of this, Bobby, in the car? Like on the way out there? Do you keep yeah. this to yourself? How does it. No, I'll share this. I'll share this info. Um, so I did some checking into the, the good doctor and seems pretty clean. So I share all this info with um, Murnau and Maybelline. Um, so. Is this anyone that I would have had any kind of professional contact with or heard about in my circles at any point? Yeah. Uh, do a luck roll. 88, no. Critical fail. You've never heard the name and just never came across them before uh, in, your, in your career. All right, so we'll watch your car now pull up to uh to the gatehouse and albert anselstock <laughs> is out of, of albert the guard is that his name? albert albert albert, albert. albert. anselstock <laughs> totally normal name <laughs> 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 hey old Guy. albert <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Like, do some digging because clearly this guy is also a Delta Green agent on an operation. <laughs> <laughs> Why else would he have chosen such an insane name? <laughs> Albert. I like it. Um, Albert steps out. Can I help you? Uh, hey, good morning. We're uh, here for uh, the, uh, <laughs> the investigation here. My name's Detective Bivens. I got my colleagues in here. We're, uh, we're uh, you know, going in to uh, investigate here. Um, they should be expecting us. Here's my ID. There you go. Investigate. 
Right, what are yes. you uh what are you investigating? Uh oh shit, did we mean Did something happen at the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> um uh you know, no, Pull it's together, just Bobby. It's just uh <laughs> it's just another uh routine, you know, uh hassle between uh you know patients and yeah it's just staple stuff you 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 wouldn't you wouldn't need to know about this we're, we're being expected though you can you can go ahead and let us in there all right uh your colleague already arrived he's up there uh colleague. just give me a second could i get your identification please and yours as well yeah and he points to vicky and neil vicky gets hers and she's thinking in her mind like fucking bitch he came here without us first doesn't answer his fucking phone she's like just handing it over here all right uh neil do you hand yours over or do you pull uh bobby's gun out of his holster and shoot the guard <laughs> he knows too much i lean forward and uh I, I pass bobby's like my... we're here for an investigation he says what's investigate what investigation neil just grabs a gun and <laughs> blasts it Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the boys are Slams back in town. Mission <laughs> 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 God, we're so good at this game. We're so good at this. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I thought they did. I thought they knew. I thought they knew there was going to be an investigation. They're expecting the state police. We're right? here about a murder. Well, maybe they didn't. They didn't release that two patients escaped. Oh, I just said the. I just said investigation. I said I know, an investigation. but maybe they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Um, yeah, I think I covered that up pretty well. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, really I think you really. nailed that land there, Bobby. Smooth. We're good. Very we're smooth. Good. All right, he'll take your three IDs unless you object, Neil, and he goes into the no, guardhouse. No, I lean forward and say, we're cops. <laughs> yeah. I've been, right. He's been practicing his accent. I didn't realize yeah. we were all doing accents. Hey, man. So oh, what? You're from, the, you're from the Massachusetts State Police, the one from the Bronx? Yeah, this is <laughs> from California over here. I yeah. was transferred. Excuse me. You were transferred between states? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> between state police department. I got That's demoted. How they do it. They shuffle. I got demoted. <laughs> From New York, oh, and I had to go to Massachusetts. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, You're such a lower you. tier wow. state. Hold on, let me try to do a Massachusetts. Am I doing it? Is it no, different? Than <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, you are not. I fucking nailed it. <laughs> this is terrible. This is all bad. <laughs> We're cops. We're cops. Says. We're we got to park our car. Can you let us drive? Uh, he'll take your IDs in. He calls up. Similar thing to, to Roger. Um, where? Uh, go ahead and everybody give me a search roll. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Man, 26. Terrible, 26. 26. Uh, 54 over a much lower number. <laughs> 26. I got 26 under 43. Nice. Six. 43. Nice. Six? Six. Nice. nice. All right, under, so under 53. We'll say Neil's on the far side of the car and doesn't hear. And as he calls up to the house, you can hear that he doesn't know why there's state police coming to the guardhouse. And he's calling up to confirm that, uh, really, there's there's another three? Like, what are they doing here? And then he, you just hear him listen for a second, like, all right, yeah, okay. And he hangs up, and he comes back uh, to your car. You're good to go. Here you go. And he hands back out your IDs, and uh, opens up the gate. Thanks, bro. And you... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, bro. Uh, Thanks you... a lot, kid. <laughs> is there a Duncan? Is there a dun- Duncan nearby, or is there? Uh... Go socks. Go, Go socks. socks. Take it easy. Take, take, take it easy. Go socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go socks. Uh, he says as he gets back because that, that heals all. That cures yeah. all. Right. He nice. stops asking all questions or isn't suspicious at all about being transferred between states. I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I was recently transferred. <laughs> I was demoted <laughs> from New York. Cup to Boston, I was to demoted from New York. <laughs> yeah, it's like the minor leagues. <laughs> like, oh, she's I just got to do down. a few years with the Massachusetts Stadies, and then they'll bring her back up. <laughs> yeah. oh, she'll develop down there. Her up. <laughs> she'll develop down there. <laughs> <laughs> Crack a lot of tools, man. But just the New York State together. Police, aka the Big Show. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you guys, a second car pulls through the gate, and as you're looking up at this building, you see there are three towers. That e each one is three floors, so it's not a huge, like you know, huge hospital. It's it's it's, it's R relatively small compared to hospitals, right? And um, three stories and then three separate buildings, but that are connected by, uh, you know, this, uh, the building in, in the back part. And I had said to Roger, his first thought was that it kind of resembled an E. As this car is pulling up, we see we will come up in the air over top and get an aerial view. And as we look down on the grounds, you see it's wide open, very pretty manicured trees kind of dotted throughout, beautiful grounds. This fence goes all the way around the area. And as we come to be nearly directly over the hospital and your car is just kind of a small little ant moving along this roadway, um, we see maybe what Neil sees when he looks at this hospital. Neil, your first mental impression is that the hospital looks like a three to you. Huh. And it starts to trigger an odd sense in your mind. All of a sudden, there's a flash in your brain, and you just see a telephone book with the number three X'd out in every single instance nice. that it appeared. And then, and then you flash back, and you realize, like, this could be an interpretation of the way the hospital is shaped. Right. Oh. And he's, like, he's patting his bag next to him with all of his Polaroids in it. Like, he knows that picture's in there, too. Mm. So he's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. You pull up and park. Let's go back to Roger. What, what is Roger doing? Well, as they maybe turn a bend you, they, and start going to the parking lot, Roger is standing, leaning on his car, uh, looking cool in a jacket. Smoking. He looks like James fucking Dean. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, waves with his smoke hand. Looks at his watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we we pull into the spot next to his car, I guess. Yeah. Hop out, Messiah. It's a. Uh, Officer Royale. Right. <clears throat> I um, picked up coffees for everybody, but you weren't at the meeting place this morning. I had a cup before I came. Okay. Do you want this one? What's that? Do you want this extra coffee, or should I throw it away? Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> Bobby looks to Myrna. It's cold. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, anything we want to discuss before we go in? Great. I guess we're all on the same page and we all have the same exact information and nothing to share with each other. Just do this like Exeter said. The the staff doesn't know about Delta Green, but Dalen does. We maintain the cover till we get to Dalen. Then we can discuss the particulars. We also found out on the drive up, perhaps the staff doesn't even know about the patients who escaped. Yes. Thanks to makeshift's interesting line of questioning <laughs> and answering. Yeah, as expertly as you obscured our purpose, makeshift, perhaps we should just try to avoid giving any particulars until we speak to the doctor. Right. <clears throat> I gotta say, I've been uh, sitting here for a while, while you were late, picking up Maybelline's multiple coffees. 
and uh, <laughs> standing there at these coffee store. Detective Isotope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yes. New York Detective Isotope. New, New York Isotope. Hold on, let me try to do a Boston accent again. <laughs> How about now? Is it different than the way I was doing it before? Well, I, I can't see too good. Is that Donnie Wahlberg over there? <laughs> 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 I uh have I just seen people coming and going like uh in and out have there been other cars that have come up while I've been waiting there uh well it's it's kind of about how we're no <laughs> no just just no. roll a luck roll okay just drop my, my uh alright here we go I rolled a 75 yeah, no, it's been strangely quiet. I gotta say, it's been strangely quiet, a little too quiet. When I think hospital, I think people arriving around the time that I do. No one's come in or out. I don't know. Something about this place just gives me the creeps. Truth be told, I've never really liked hospitals. Agent, make, agent makeshift. Uh had a contact and did some digging on the doctor and um, he seems clean. I did some digging myself at a uh, computer <laughs> with internet. <laughs> really? What did you find? <laughs> First of all, this place is not a hotel. <laughs> Contrary to the information we received no. from Exeter. Oh I'm not the hell Exeter was talking about. This is a hospital. Um, but he looks, he looks clean. Oddly enough, there's no records of his schooling. But uh, beyond that, uh, he seems clean. A little too clean. <laughs> Say he's a friendly. We better hope he is. Well, we're gonna need friendlies if this does have anything to do with Abigail, right? Why are you standing two feet <laughs> in front of me while you talk? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to hear me clearly, damn it. I see. You've always been a weird close talker. Big <laughs> shift. Let's just go in. I smell your aroma. <laughs> it's the cold everybody... coffee that I'm drinking. Okay. <laughs> Well, it was hot when I got it. Can everybody tell me your uh, last names again so I can call you correctly in, once we're inside? Yes, Detective Bivens. Michael Bivens. Bivens. Special Detective Mitsubishi Royale. <laughs> <laughs> Detective William Costigan, Jr. Jr. <laughs> Costigan, Costigan, Costigan. All right. Mental and, notes taken. And what's yours there, madam? De Detective Penelope Isotope. <laughs> what the hell is that supposed to be? I'm sorry, Detective William Cossigan Jr.? You want people to ask you how to spell it and what the junior stands for? That's too complicated. <laughs> it's a name. Penelope Isotope <laughs> is also a name. She was a scientist before she became a detective. She sounds was like a video game Was she a scientist because her name was Isotope? <laughs> yeah. <that> just... <laughs> Until a horrible accident turned her into a detective. <laughs> is she Dr. Isotope? There's a comic about it. Is she it. a Watchmen villain? Yes. Uh, all right, let's go inside. Right. Let's go. go into this totally safe building. I check for traps. <laughs> <laughs> the four of you walk up to the door the Dorchester House psychiatric facility. Reach out to grab the handle, this white, painted white door with golden handles, and you pull back the door and step in. You step in on some marble flooring, and uh, after a very small foyer, you see a reception area in front a desk and a woman sits behind it. She could be late forties, early fifties, maybe uh, blonde hair. And she looks up as you come in and smiles. 
Hey, darling, how you doing here? Uh, we're the uh, detectives uh, here uh, to see Dr. Dalen. Oh, hello. Yes, Dr. Dallin is expecting you. Dallin, Dallin, whatever. Please, just... <laughs> wait one moment. Sure. And she gets up, walks through a door that's right behind her, comes back in, and says, The doctor will see you upstairs. I'll take you. Follow Great. me. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Boston accent. <laughs> yeah, going. really. I'm just gonna good. keep it going all night. Uh, <laughs> thanks, sweetheart. Just gonna keep going You're all doll. night. You're a doll. <laughs> she uh, escorts you uh, up the stairs in the main administration building, the central building, and you go up to the third floor. She walks you out and into a room with a door with a plaque outside. It says, Dr. Richard F. Dallin. She says, nice to meet you. And closes the door behind you. And that is where we'll pick it up next time. Oh. I, think you're, I think you were right, Troy. I think we are stuck here. <laughs> you can never leave. I'm okay with that. We can do Boston accents all day. Yeah. 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 We're in our element. wind in my hair. Uh. I'm smelling like glitters. I'm not feeling. Yep. Get ready. Get ready next week. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. Uh, sweet dreams. Good night, darlings. <laughs>